all his family, he'll be all right. If I didn't wait. Maneri! Maneri, come back. Oh, he should have stayed at the mission. That broken arm of his needs more attention. You want them all here at the mission. But the way they treat you, with all your knowledge and faith. Oh, Ted, there are better targets for your sympathy. Twenty years ago, I knew what I was up against. Missionaries are tough people. Well, at least somebody appreciates you. The Queen of Soap sent you that gold medal. If only Her Majesty had sent money instead. We could have bought that new sterilizer. Dr. Table. Officer Daly, it's good to see you. Uh, Ted, put on some tea for the officer. Uh, just a minute, Cambridge. Doctor, this is not my usual social visit. I'd rather you read it aloud. It's for your assistant. Edward Camidge, this is a warrant for your arrest for the murder of Samuel Nutter. That's impossible. The court in Brisbane will decide. Oh, no. No. Hi, Chris. I'm really ready. Uh, Dan, I don't know how to break this to you, but... Uh... No trip to Sydney Town? Oh, Chris, you promised. I've been looking forward to our... I'm re sorry. We're going into the outback. Oh, no. Susie Howes will kill me if I don't turn up. Well, it's out of my hands, Dan. The coach has been commandeered. Who by? Her Majesty the Queen. The Queen? Well, in a roundabout way. A prisoner has to be taken from Gundawindi to Brisbane. The trooper who was to take him has been wounded, and since there isn't any other in the area, they've asked me to take charge. A convict. Uh-huh. But if it'll help any, he's being accompanied by Dr. Inigo Table. Father of the Never Never? The same. We'll be in Sydney, Dan, just a few weeks late. Ah, oh, it's too late. She's the most popular girl in Sydney. If I don't all right, up... all right, all right. I'll, uh, I'll get one of the other drivers to go with me. Uh, if you knew Susie like... Oh, well. But if it was anyone else but Dr. Inigo Table... Good boy. You know, people are pretty excited about this trip of yours, Doctor. I'm afraid the displays of public affection make me very uncomfortable, Mr. Well, then you'd better harden yourself for our arrival in Brisbane. You don't anticipate a scene, do you? Doctor, you're news any time. But I think under these circumstances... I didn't want him to come. Ted, I've told you a dozen times, you have nothing to do with my excursion. For obscure reasons, the Humane Society decided some months ago to present me with some award or something. Until now, I've been unable to accept. But I hope to shake them down for some new equipment for the hospital. <laughs> but you will testify at the trial. I know Ted is innocent. If I can convince the jury of that, it'll be little enough return for all the years of loyalty and friendship he's shown me. Who was this murdered man? Notter, was that his name? Yes, Sam Notter. A scoundrel, Mr. Cobb. If I weren't a man of God, I should be sorely tempted to say we were well rid of the fellow. He found gold near the mission. No vast strike, but there was talk of a sizable nugget. All rumor, I suspect, but the rumor was enough to cause violence. And he was brought into your hospital. Unfortunately, too late for me to be able to save his life. Multiple knife wounds. Both lungs were perforated. And you discovered the body? I went out to his hut, yes. He'd had malaria. He hadn't been in to collect his medicine. I will verify Ted's story. But he was struck before I got there, Mr. Cobb. He was bleeding and dying when I got there. I swear that, Mr. Cobb. Well, then the evidence is all circumstantial. There is one other unfortunate factor. Tell him the truth, Ted. I served time before, Mr. Cobb. Manslaughter. It was in self-defense, but he was convicted. When I came out, I couldn't get a job anywhere. 
Then I heard what the doctor was doing in the outback, working with the natives. Sounded good to me. I still have the letter you wrote me. It was the beginning of a most happy union. Yeah. Until now. It will be again. With you coming to help me, I know that. sitting there. You almost got killed. Stop swearing at me. I'm not used to it. Would you please bring my bag? Young lady, are you in the habit of picking up strange coaches? I heard in the town you were driving to Brisbane. Your reputation is good, Mr. Carr. My name is Felicity Parr. We're not taking any passengers this trip. Then you may call me baggage. <laughs> I wish all our cargo was so pretty. Please take me, Mr. Cobb. It's a matter of life and death. <laughs> All right, then. Let me help you. imagine Saint snoring. It's just what he is, miss. Ever since we moved out here, I've heard such wonderful stories about him. Miss Felicity, is your family on the land? I have no family. It was mission to Brisbane, Miss Life and Death. Oh! 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 Blasted bandicoots! Now, how did that get there? It must have blown down during the storm last night. We can't turn around here. Can't back out either. Something might happen. That river full of sharks. Sharks? Yeah, that's right. All along the coast, sharks come up these rivers. Well, what will we do? It looks hopeless. That is a word never to use, my dear. You know, like swear words. <laughs> well, look, we better get the team unhitched and try to turn the coach by hand. Damage. You wouldn't try to escape. I'm innocent, Mr. Cobb. All right. Well, you get the luggage down, that'll make it a little easier. Dan, All you right. better put a log or a rock or something under those wheels. All right. We should have seen him, Chris. They cleared the log like a team of hunters. <laughs> Damage, will you take that chalk out? Doctor, can you give us a hand? Couldn't be dead. How is he? Empty. He's breathing now. Mr. Cobb, 
You should get out of those wet clothes. Pneumonia won't help. No, there isn't time. Dan, let's get the horse and see if we can pull it out. Will you see if you can help the doctor get comfortable? <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Well, the coach is in good shape. No bones broken. I hope you're all right, Doctor. That isn't Mother's nugget, Mr. Cobb. It wasn't found. No, no, Ted. We mustn't lie about it anymore. That is Mother's nugget. I thought you told me it didn't exist. Well, uh, Mother wasn't dead when they brought him into the hospital. Futile though they were, my efforts to save him must have stirred his gratitude. He gave it to you? Not to me. The hospital. He told me where to find it. Why didn't you report it to the police? The hospital needed the money. It was falling apart. Half the equipment the doctor made himself. You could have had it back after the trial. He kept quiet because of me. Perhaps I was wrong, Mr. Cobb, but... I felt the appearance of the nugget in any connection with the hospital might be damaging for Ted's case. Now I shall certainly report it. I would if I were you. Well, I guess we'd better find some place to bed down for the night. doctor was lying, trying to cover up for Cammage. Mm. If the dying man was capable of telling him where to find the nugget, he must have told him who the killer was. Is Cammage innocent? <laughs> you know, there's something else that puzzles me. You. Remember what happened to the cat. <laughs> you don't strike me as the type to be running away from something, Felicity. But I see you are. I'm running to something, Mr. Cobb. Ma'am? Better than that. Freedom. Independence. Sleep right at this moment. Good night. Good night. I hope you find it. Gone. Yeah, so is my head. But Chris Cammy just gone. What? The doctor's gone too. They must have tried to cross the river. You stay here, I'll get after them. Oh, Mr. Cobb, Mr. Cobb. I'm coming to get you. You gotta help. Where's Dr. 
Dr. Table. I tried to save him. Where is he? This way. <laughs> Help me, Mr. Cobb. Mr. Cobb! You said there were sharks in there. There are. He tried to ride across. The horse went under. I can get you out of there, Doctor, but I have a condition. Mr. Cobb, hold he it. Can... I want the truth about the murder. Get me out. I mean now, Doctor. Right now. Ah! Ah! Did you see it? Did you see it? Ah! I'm waiting, Doctor. Help him, help him. Please, Mr. Get Cobb. away. Hamish didn't do it, did he, Doctor? No, no. It was you, wasn't it? Help me. Get me out. Answer me. Answer me. Yes, yes, yes. I did it. I did it. Help me. Get me out. Get me out. I saw him come up behind you, Mr. Cobb. He hit you? That's right. The letter. He knew from the letter. It was a reply from the Humane Society to a request by Dr. Table. A request? Mm-hmm. He asked to be met with due ceremony to receive his award. Ceremony? I asked for a brass band. But you always I say... wanted brass bands and banners. A little more to the point was the date of the letter. Weeks before the murder. He'd planned on this trip to Brisbane. And you let everyone think you came up just for me. A big act of self-sacrifice to speak up for me at the trial. What were you going to say? I honestly would have done my best for you. And if I hadn't got off, you'd have kept quiet and let me hang. Wouldn't you? How could a man like you... I know. I know. I wanted to have a little fun. To make up for all those empty years of sacrifice. Years wasted away in that God-forgotten wilderness. God-forgotten? But your work. My work? I didn't think they cared. I gave my life to those ignorant, fly-blown people. For what? Ted knows. Ted knows how I suffered for them. I healed them and tried... Oh, God, how I tried to teach them. Faith, cleanliness, disinfect wounds, don't rub dirt into a bitten finger. They thought their witch doctors with their bones and powders, their feathers and leaves, could do more to cure their ills than I with my skills. My time for giving was over. It was time to take. But their endless little gifts, their silly trinkets and tokens of feathers and clay, they thought they could make up for their ignorance by giving me stupid little toys. What about their love, Doctor? I gave you love and gratitude. I worshipped you for what you were. Not only what you did for me. It wasn't enough. I craved it from all men. Dan, we almost ready? Why be long? Mr. Cobb. Hmm? I want you to leave me at the first town. I won't be going to Brisbane. Matter of life and death. I've seen too much of both these last two days. But I think I've learned something about myself. I guess we should never stop, Felicity. I'm going home. Well, you see, the people that I live with, my guardians, they... Your family. My family? 
I worked so hard for them on the farm. I was like the doctor. I expected gratitude. Forgetting all the things they'd done for me. I think you have learned something. Why is he stopping? I asked him to stop on the outskirts of Brisbane. Doctor? Look. The nugget. The gold. I have it. After the trial, I'd like Ted to have it, if possible. For the sterilizer. I always said you'd go back. Last band. I can't face them. How can I face them now? Well, you're not going to let them down, Doctor. You ask for a brass band, well, it's not for you. It's for them. Dan, we're ready. I strayed so terribly far. Thanks for helping me back. You know, Doctor, one way or another, I guess it happens to all of us. 